Thank you so much for joining me today on Totally Beads Live. How are you doing? It's Friday. I hope you're having a lovely week and I hope you've got something to look forward to this weekend. So today I'm going to be making with you some very pretty little earrings. We're going to be using gemstones, which is always a must, I think. Um, but I'm going to be doing some chain mail with you. It's a very simple technique and it makes a very beautiful delicate looking weave. So I'm going to show you how to do two different types, one being Byzantine and one being a general box chain mail. And you're going to get a lot in your kit for bargain price, which means you're going to be able to make up four pairs of earrings. So in two different styles and you can do whichever you want or all of them. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm hoping my downward facing camera is okay. It's looking a little bit fuzzy at the moment. And obviously you're gonna need to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna say hello to you very quickly. I'm gonna take you over to the website. I'm gonna show you the goodies on offer today. And then we're gonna get going. So lots of you in already, which is lovely to see. Good morning to Joy. Hello to lovely Francis. She says good morning, everybody. Hello to Tracy. Uh, she says good morning too. Janice is in. She says hello to everybody and all their fellow beaders. Good morning to Lucy. Hello to Nina. Hello to Debbie. And hello to Janice. She says morning everyone from an overcast Swansea. It's quite overcast here as well today, but it's not been raining. I'm hoping we have some nice weather particularly tomorrow because it's my little one's birthday he's a big five tomorrow so if you do see any strange shadows on my mat it'll be the giant dinosaur balloon that's floating around the room here in the background um so hello to you all hello to Anne. hello to marcia i hope i've not missed anybody hello to smoffy she says hi all can't stay long today um, she's waiting outside the hospital for a wheelchair assessment, but will be part of the rewatch crew later, um, or the rematch crew. I hope all goes well for you. Hello to Joanne. She says, good morning, Natalie. I really wanted to say congratulations on you. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. It's still not really sunk in, to be honest, but... I don't know. I'm sure when the things that have been in my mind are in my hand, it will all feel a lot real and a lot more, even more exciting. Uh, good morning to Camille. She says, good morning, Natalie and everybody from a sunny line. Uh, hello to Amelia. Hello to Anne, who says, good morning, Natalie ev and everybody from a very windy Yorkshire. Good morning to Anna, who's in Perth. Good morning to Sue. Hello to Rachel, who's in Cumbria. Beautiful part of the world, Rachel. Good morning to Gwen. Hello to Olivia. Um, good morning to Lisa, who's in New Jersey. Um, Diane is wishing Frank a happy birthday. Thank you so much. Uh, Ninda is watching in a cold Scotland. Good morning to Margaret. And hello to Elaine. So, shall we get going? Shall I take you over to the website and you can see these beauties? They obviously, again, will look better when you're wearing them um, than when they're lying flat. But I just really, really love this design. I'm quite new to um, chain mail. It's, it's something that's new to me. Chain mail, chain mailing. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, so I'm learning too. But I think these are really straightforward one to do once you get the hang of it and you can do all sorts with this obviously traditionally um you'd make chain from it so you could make necklaces and bracelets this is a really quick make because we're only making a few of the cages in the byzantine weave which will mean you've got a quick make but beautiful beautiful earrings so i'm going to be using the six millimeter jump rings you can again use larger if you want to scale them up you could even use smaller but i think these are perfect size the six millimeter because they're dainty but they're not too fiddly um obviously this type of weave with the with the chain mail the byzantine has been used for absolute centuries it's really really old and very very loved um so hopefully you'll all get a little bit of inspiration and you'll enjoy it as much as i have done as well camille says she loves my cross now thank you very much so next week jumping the gun a little bit i'm going to be with you on monday making a beautiful necklace and then i'm going to be with you on wednesday instead and i'm going to be doing some um little gemstone wire crosses with you or crucifixes just in time for easter um i won't be with you on friday because i'm traveling down to the warehouse and i'm going to be putting kits together for the next 
foreseeable so hopefully any luck i'll get months and months worth of planning to do with you um so i'll be able to put those tutorials on for you and still do them twice a week um so a little bit of change to the schedule but i'll thank you camille i'll be doing those crosses with all of you next wednesday if you'd like to join me hello to elaine good morning to donna um she's in rhode island how lovely um Oh, everybody's wishing my little boy a very happy birthday so thank you so much he's um he's very excited he's been on countdown for well probably since christmas to be honest nina says she's not tried the design so hopefully you know i'll be able to show you it clearly and you'll understand it good morning to lorraine um oh it was ninda's am i pronouncing that right ninda Ninda, it was their birthday on Tuesday, so happy birthday to you. Um, I'm guessing you're not five. Uh, Rachel says, um, it is life by the sea. Oh, what's this? Am I live by the sea now watching your views the Lake District all year round? Oh, you live, sorry, it depends how you read it, doesn't it? She lives by the sea. How beautiful. I love the Lake District, absolutely love it. Uh, Carol says she's got no notification. I'm hoping I'm live on YouTube and Facebook at the moment. Um, we, I don't know what's going on with it. Good morning to Hannah. Um, and Mina's already um, getting her ordering, I think, for, for some wire. Um, the kits will be all put together for you next week. Uh, so you don't worry about that. Um, Carol says it's her daughter's birthday today too. Um, and no she's not five <laughs> and yeah we're on youtube and facebook right let's go over to the website i'll stop chatting we'll have a little sip of coffee because i've not had one for a while um not, not for a good couple of hours anyway marcia says she loves doing chain mail um so you can give me any tips you've got because as i say i'm new to it as well but i'm absolutely loving it so head over to totallybeads.co.uk don't forget we've got an amazing offer on at the moment i'm just waiting because the banner might scroll across but in celebration of our i think is it our third year of doing live tutorials totally beads have been doing live tutorials for three fabulous years um in lockdown it was every single day so in honor of that as a little celebration you can spend 50 pounds and get 25 percent off this weekend so the code is mar as in march m-a-r 23 so don't forget if you are going on a little bit of a shopping spree then make the most of that offer and you can use that offer as many times as you want and looking at all those gorgeous things scrolling along the top there you go there it is spend 50 get 25 percent off use this code it's amazing Okay, into video tutorials we go on our website, which is totallybeads.co.uk. And you can see today we are making the Anne earrings. Gorgeous name. That's my middle name, spelt with an E as well. So here you go. They are an absolute bargain price for you today. Don't forget you're getting gemstone rounds in these kits too. So you can get carnelian, which are on the gold plated jump rings and findings. So your ear wires and that ball pin too. They are £3.50 and you're going to be able to make four pairs of those up so you can use both of the designs, the box and the Byzantine. I'm always struggling how to pronounce it. I think it's Byzantine byzantine is how it's said you can also get some gorgeous fluorite ones which are four pounds and obviously in the fluorite you're going to get lots of different colors so you might get um more purple colored fluorite you might get more kind of greeny colored ones they are absolutely beautiful in the um silver colorway and you can also get a silver colorway in the labradorite as well or labradite however you pronounce it and um, they are they are also four pounds so you're going to get that absolute beautiful transformation stone of that gorgeous kind of labrador essence that lovely shimmer and sheen on those beads and we've also got the soda light as well four pairs in your kit for three pounds and fifty pence so i'll show you the gorgeous carnelian ones and you can have a little look at how these look so you're making four pairs of earrings up or you get enough to make four pairs anyway and you can see we've got two slightly varied designs so you've got your 
this one here that I'm showing you is your um, box, as in those lovely little cages that we create fit together in a little row um, and they all sit next to each other. This style, where you've got your two rings in between them, those two jump rings in between, create what we call a Byzantine weave. So again, for centuries, it's been absolutely adored. These are non-tarnished jump rings, so they're going to keep their colour and their luster. Um, they're beautiful. They're six millimetres, so they're dainty enough. They look very elegant, but they're not too fiddly and tricky. I think when you start going down a size and you're using kind of like four millimetres, it looks beautiful and intricate, but it can be a little bit fiddly. So I think this is this is the perfect size I have found. Um, so this is your Byzantine and they're going to have cages that having those two links in between are going to make those cages face towards each other. So two gorgeous different style of earrings using very similar technique. And these are your carnelian. So that gorgeous, gorgeous orange gemstone. Very, very beautiful. Everything in your kit for £3.50, four pairs of earrings. You're getting your ear wires, your ball pins, your gemstone round beads, which are six millimetre in size and your six millimetre jump rings as well. So that is the Anne earrings in Carnelian. We've got the gorgeous fluorite, which is four pounds, still an absolute bargain for four pairs of earrings. The most you're going to be spending on a pair of earrings is a pound and they are gemstone. Gemstones. So this one is your fluorite. So you can see here in the different designs I've done, they are the same type of gemstone, but they are very different in colour and they're absolutely beautiful. So they are on your silver colourway, looking very, very pretty. I love them. I really, really do enjoy doing this. I mean, I say that when I'm trying to do it under the camera today, I might be pinging them all over the place. So we'll see how I get on. Please be patient with me. Um, we've got the Labrador right, which is one of my faves. So you can see how this looks. Again, everything in your kit to make four pairs of earrings for just four pounds. Very delicate, very sweet, and they look gorgeous all the way round. So whether you're seeing them from the side, from the front, from the back, they're definitely an earring to wear if you've got short hair or a hair up style, just to show them off. And we've also got the Sodalite too. Look at them. I think they look really expensive. I think they look very, very classy. The Sodalite are £3.50 for four pairs of earrings. Look at them. I made up with them. Very proud of myself. Dead easy to do, but they look they look a lot more complicated than they are. So don't forget, we do ship worldwide. So if you need to change your currency, you can just click on that little logo at the top there and that will change it to whatever it is that you're looking for. And don't forget to make the most of that offer today as well. If you're spending over £50, you can get 25% off at the checkout if you enter code MAR23. So I'm going to leave them there and I'm going to see what you're thinking in the comments. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing on the mat. It was awfully fuzzy before and I don't know why. Um, everyone's being so kind and liking these. Hello to Tutu. Janice says, my kits are already ordered. Thank you so much. Which one did you go for? Or did you get some multiple ones? Because they're a bargain. Camille says she loves the Byzanti Byzantine. Uh, she's made quite a few bracelets with it. This is your link today. Thanks, Lucy. So we are on totallybeads.co.uk forward slash facebook dash tutorials forward slash and dash earrings and look at me getting it the right way around the first time yay <laughs> thank you for sharing that link rachel says she's never tried chain mail so hopefully you you'll find this really really easy this is the code if you're not sure what i'm saying if you're spending over 50 pounds, we've got an amazing 25% off. And I think having that offer is just brill because, you know, we're not dictating to you what we're putting in a bundle or anything. You can choose whatever you want. Obviously, this doesn't include already discounted items, but we've got so much on the website, loads of new stock as well. So if there's something that takes your fancy, pop it in your basket. Um, 
hello to Joanne. She's wishing my little one a very, very happy birthday. Good morning to Elaine. She says absolutely nothing on Facebook this morning, but it's nice and clear on YouTube. I don't know what's going on. Good morning to Kim K. Um, oh, Mina. She's saying she thinks the Labrador right might just fall into a basket. Put them in. They're a bargain. What are they? Four pounds, those ones. Uh, Nicole says, hello. She says, hi, Natalie and fellow beaders. Looks like I made it just in time. Looks like a great earring project. They're so quick to do. I'll do a few with you and show you different styles. Good morning to Angela. Um, she's been busy walking a dog. Uh, good. Janice is loving all of them. Uh, Lindsay says, good morning to everybody. And she's having a sneaky coffee. Do you know what? I'll join you. Let's just have a little minute with my mummy Saurus cup. Dinosaur mad in this house. And there's a whole herd of them coming again tomorrow. Not like I've not got enough of them in my house. There's some in every room. Um, Janice says she loves chain mail. Lucy's already done two orders on the Totally Beads website and it needs to be taken away from her for the rest of the week. Well, that's OK. You can stay off it until next week because this is the last live today. So you'll be fine. Um, mind you, the offer's only on till Sunday, so you might as well make the most of it. Marcia says I need to go shopping for supplies later. She's on vacation in New York for a month with no beading supplies. Oh, Marcia, get on the website. Um, uh, oh, Mina still got the Mobius kits to finish. Yeah, we were doing different type of chain mail there, weren't we? Um, <laughs> and Angela's got a Nanosaurus cup. We've got Daddy Saurus, Mummy Saurus, and Mini Saurus. But Angela, oh, I might have to get me mum a Nanosaurus cup. That's brilliant. Um, and Mina is saying, yeah, here too to Lucy. Her order uh, from Wednesday's arrived in the office. You just have to, um, I don't know. You can't address it to someone else. They're very subtle. You can tell what it is because it says Totally Beads probably on the label on the outside of the letter. Um, oh, and Lucy's bought a new toolkit as well. Yeah, make the most of it. Right, let's go down on the mat and let me see. Hopefully it's looking a little bit clearer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two different types if I can zoom in here. So you can see you've got your gorgeous little chain mail earrings we are only doing uh i think 12 jump rings in each earring but you can keep going with that if you wanted to make them longer you're getting plenty of jump rings in your kit so this one is your uh, byzantine weave and that's done by having those two jump rings in between you always use four jump rings to make those little cages if you can see in the middle to make that lovely little pattern but the byzantine has two of the jump rings in the middle which make those cages kind of face into each other which is just so sweet if you want to do the box one which has got exactly the same amount of jump rings in you can see each of those boxes just fit together and sit next to each other. So really straightforward to do and really, really pretty. So you're going to get enough to make but four pairs of earrings in both of these designs, or you can do all of one if you've got a preference. So you can see the gorgeous carnelian here, which is on the gold. <laughs> Tracy's saying, I did an order on Wednesday, I'm just waiting for the delivery and I can't wait to play. You've got the Labrador, right? Which my camera's not going to pick it up, but it has the most beautiful, lovely little sheen on it. So I call them flashes. So you can see like a little flash of colour. You can get blues and golds and just lovely little sparkle in them. It's one of my favourite gemstones. So that one, your labrador, right? Your fluorite, you can see, is very, very different. So these are both fluorite, very different in colour. Just give that a little pull to flick it back into position there. Lucy says she's got about 15 bags of Toho treasures too, and she's very stocked up. Tracy, they do look confusing, but they're absolutely not. I'm going to get going with them now, and I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you all the different types that you can make. So pick whichever colour you've gone for. We'll go with the 
gold fair. So these are the true gold colour, gold plated. You can get champagne, you can get rose gold, you can get all sorts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count out 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now when they come out of the bag, my jump rings, you'll see they might have a little slight overlap on them. If I can hold one up to the camera, this is a perfect example. So how you make a jump ring is you basically have your wire and it's coiled around a rod and then it's cut. So when they first come out of the bag, some of them will have this little overlap to them where they've been cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two pairs of pliers. You can use your flat nose, chain nose, your round nose if you want to. Um, all I'm going to need is two pairs of pliers to open up my jump rings. And I'm going to do a little bit of preparation first. So I'm going to open up my jump rings. I'm going to leave two perfectly closed and have 10 of them open. So to open my jump rings, I'm just going to position it in between my pliers so I've got lots of that surface area. And I'm just going to give it a little twist towards me. Now, I'm using my dominant hand, so which is my right hand, and I'm twisting it towards me with that hand. And that means when I pick them up in a little bit, I can just pick them up straight off the table. So I'm just going to open up and I'm not opening them up too much, just enough for me to be able to attach them onto things. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one here. If I was to open it really, really wide like this, what I'm doing is I'm putting a load of pressure onto that part of the jump ring. And not only will it eventually snap, but I'll find I'm distorting that shape. So you can see if I'm opening it really, really wide, when I come to bring it closed now, I haven't got that true lovely circle. I've got it really, really wide. So all I'm going to do is I'm just opening up 10, just a little bit, just a few millimetres, and I'm opening it up this way. I'm not opening it outwards because, again, I don't want to distort that shape. I don't want to affect the integrity of my jump ring. And I want to make sure that when I do close them up again, I'm closing them beautifully and perfectly. So I'm opening up 10 of my jump rings. And then I'm just going to close over two. So when I do close it, I'm just going to take it slightly past the point where those two ends meet. And that will mean when I let go, it will spring fully closed like this. I do hope you can see OK. And I will keep going through it. And I will go it through it quite slowly with you. So in terms of making my earrings, I'm using two pairs of pliers. You can use your round nose as well if you want to, to hold them instead of your chain nose. I'm going to use my round nose at the end anyway, because I'm going to turn a little loop on my uh, ball pin just to dangle my gemstone off. And I'm going to use one of these. You can use any pin you like, an eye pin, a head pin, a needle, whatever. This is going to be my little cheat tool. Let me move these right out of the way because I want to make sure we've got plenty of focus. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a little bit. When I say it's my cheat tool, this is going to help me position my rings to create those cages. So to start off, let's see if we can do it right first time. I'm going to pick up one of my open jump ring. So because I've opened them like this, I should be able to just pick them up. So I'm opening up one of my open jump rings. I'm going to slide on two of those closed jump rings. And I'm even going to pop my ear wire on already. And I'm only popping the ear wire on just to give myself something to hold on to. And then I'm going to close over that jump ring. So to begin with, I've taken an open jump ring, I've hooked on two of my closed jump rings and my ear wire, which is going to give me something just to hold on to like this. Now, any time we make the Byzantine 
weave or even a box weave if we're making those cages we always need four jump rings so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in and i'm going to pick up again off on the mat another jump ring and slide that through both of those two jump rings that are already on and then i'm going to close it over i've got shaky hands today i don't know why i don't know whether i'm just sitting on a nerve on my elbow or i'm feeling a little bit excited i don't know and then i'm going to pick up my other open jump ring and i'm sliding that through those two jump rings as well so i can drop that other one it doesn't really matter as long as i'm not going through the one i've just added and then i'm going to close that over and again i want to make sure that's closed lovely so now i've got two jump rings on two jump rings like this i can hold it that way so you can see so i've just added two onto two and I'm going to make my first cage with those two onto two. So I'm going to hold on to my ear wire and I'm going to use my pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open those two out and they can flop if they need to. And then I'm going to open these two out. So we're opening up and down and side to side. So you can see now here. I've exposed a little gap in between those jump rings. So I'll do that again. So I'm opening out. So up and down and side to side. And I'm just going to catch using my pin. It's because I'm trying to do it under the camera. It isn't that fiddly. But I'm just going to catch the inside of those two jump rings. And that's going to make my first little cage. I'm going to keep my pin in for now, but if you want to, you can pinch your jump rings and that will keep those little parts exposed. And then I'm going to pick up another jump ring, an open one, and I'm sliding through where that pin is. Take that pin out now. So you can see I've just caught the two parts of the inside. And then I'm going to close that jump ring over. And I'm going to pick up another jump ring and I'm going to go back through those same two rings and close that over. So now when I let go, I pop the pin in just to give it a little bit of tension to see. You'll see I've created that first little cage. I really hope this is nice and clear for you. So I'm going to do the Byzantine weave, which means these two that I'm holding on to at the moment are going to link my two cages. If I was going to make a box weave, I'd just add the two on and then do exactly the same. But I'm going to add a little bit more. So I'm going to use these two jump rings. Don't worry if these flop around or anything like that. I'm going to come in because I've opened them up and I've prepped my materials already. I can just pick these jump rings up off the desk with one hand. I'm going to slide them through that too and close it over. I'm going to pick another one up because we always want to use four for the cage. So we'll do two on two and I'm going to slide them through. I'm not going through the jump ring I've just attached, just the two already on. And I'm going to close that over. Lovely noise, so I know it's closed. So you can see now I've got two jump rings on those last two jump rings here. So these are the two that I'm now working on. I'm going to pick up another one of my jump rings, sliding it through that last two, and close that over. Ooh. Sometimes it's easier to kind of work off the desk, so hold it flat. And then as you close it, you're less likely to ping them away. But I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing under the camera. Just going to drop that again and make sure that they're all in position. So I've got those two on. I'm going to pick up my jump ring. It should be facing towards me the way I've opened them. So I should just pick one up, slide that in. Close in that jump ring over. Going to pick the other one up back through those two and close that over 
and then I'm going to make my other cage again. So I've now got essentially three little groups of two just dangling off each other. So I'm going to open out or up and down and then these ones are going side to side. They can flop and I tend to find that if I use my pin, it's just helpful for me to catch the inside of that jump ring. So open it out and up. Really isn't that difficult. It is just because I'm under the camera. And then I'm just catching the inside here to make that little cage. I keep my pin in just so I can bring in another one. Oh. Dropped it out to the side, up and down. Catch it in the middle. If you want, you can get those bits to drop to the side. That's okay. As long as you've just exposed those inner part of the jump ring like here so i am going to keep my pin in just for now add that extra jump ring through and close that over so i've created those two little cages that face into each other so those cages point towards each other making that beautiful traditional Byzantine weave. And it looks gorgeous from all angles. Um, Lucy says she might try these. She's not done much chain mail before. Suji's going to catch up later. I hope you're all right, sweetheart. I hope you're feeling all right. Um, and Mina's saying she might make a pair of earrings and she's going out for drinks and dinner with work with colleagues. Well, these will look beautiful. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave it as that and I'm just going to add on my little gemstone at the bottom on that dangle. So let's use, let's use the soda light. So to create my little dangle, I'm going to take my gorgeous gemstone bead. I'm going to take my ball pin. I'm going to slide my ball pin through the bead. And I'm just going to turn a little loop. You could do a wrap loop with this if you wanted to, but I'm just going to turn a normal loop. So I'm just going to bend that over to 90 degrees. I'm going to get my cutters and trim it off. So I'm leaving about a centimetre. Pop that to the side. I'm going to come in with my round nose, holding my bead in my thumb to keep it into position, making sure that that pin is nice and flush between the round nose. And I'm going to turn it up all the way around to create a little loop on the top and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to find that last single jump ring that we added and add in that little bit of weight or a little bit of pull on the end of that is going to keep my Byzantine cages in position so I'm going to open up my little loop I've just made by giving it a little flick up I'm going to slide that onto the jump ring and I'm going to close it over and in minutes I already have a very beautiful little e-ring. <laughs> Rachel said I had to disappear as my shopping's arrived. Well I will uh, show you again but this time I'll show you it with the box. So all that is is instead of having those two little jump rings in the middle they're just going to sit next to each other uh, let me see where one is as an example. So they're just going to link together next to each other like that. So it's going to give you two slightly different looks. Shall we do this next one in silver jump rings? Hopefully, I'm just trying to figure out what's, what's most visible on the camera. So for this one e-ring as well, you're going to need 12 again. So one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve jump rings is going to make you up one e-ring in either of these designs. 
So again, just going to open up my jump ring. So I'm doing the same. I'm going to open up 10 and leave two perfectly closed. So just coming in, trying to get quite a lot of my surface area. I should really hold them that way. So I'm just going to try and expose that little opening and give it a little twist towards me. I feel if I open them this way, then when I put them down on the desk, that part's sticking up and I can just pick it up fairly easily. That's the plan. You do see me put my tools down every now and again and pick them up with my fingers. So I'm just gonna open up my jump rings and I find that if I'm making something like a chain mail bracelet then, or a necklace where you, you know you're repeating this loads and loads and loads, prepping your um, materials, as in opening up your jump rings and getting them ready to go before you start, just speeds up the process um, and enables you to kind of essentially work one-handed. So I've got 10 open and I'm just gonna close those two up. So you can see they've got a slight overlap to them when they come out the bag. So I'm just going to take it slightly past that point and it should spring lovely and closed. Going to have a little minute to sip my drink. And then we'll get going on this one too. So all I need is two pairs of pliers. And I'm going to pick up my ear wire because I tend to find if, you know, obviously if you're not making earrings and you are doing a bracelet or a necklace, then maybe just start off with a couple of jump rings linked together just to give you something to hold on to. You could even make a little loop with a piece of scrap wire or something just to give yourself something to hold. But I tend to find by picking one up, which is open, and attaching on those two closed jump rings, and my ear wire means when I close that open jump ring up, I've then got something to hold on to and to work off those first two jump rings. So off we go again. So I've got my two jump rings, which are closed. I'm going to pick up an open one and I'm sliding that through. See, is it me? Have we gone fuzzy again? I hope you can see. I hope I've got enough focus on my camera. I'm going to close that jump ring. And then I'm going to pick another one up. And I'm sliding back through those two same jump rings, not the one I've just attached. So I've got my first two on two, four jump rings that I can start my first cage. So where's my little pin? Could do it with that bit just to show, but so I'm letting these flop open so they go side to side, and these two are going to go up and down, and I'm exposing those two parts of the jump rings. So let's do that again. I'll hold it this way, see if you can see. So two go up and down or side to side, and the others go the opposite way. And that is exposing those two that I've just opened out to begin with in the middle. So I'm coming in with my pin and I'm just catching those two centre parts to create my first cage. Lucy says it's a bit fuzzy, but we can see. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really know what to do to change it. I tried checking my settings this morning. Is that OK? So I've just opened out and up and caught the little parts of that jump ring just to expose those middle bits. Now I'm leaving my pin in, you don't have to, you could pinch it together. I just wanna make sure that when I come in with my next jump ring, that it's going through those two bits that the pins caught. And then I can let everything fall and flop to the side as long as I've still got hold of that jump ring. These can flop to the side. You can see when I put a little bit of pressure on it, they flip back up to create that first box. But they can fall to the side now, that's okay. Picking up my other open jump ring and going back through the same where I've just attached that other one. 
So that's going through the same two jump rings and then closing that up. So I've got my first little cage here. Now, if I was doing the Byzantine, I would leave those two there and I would just add another two and another two on to create another four jump rings for my next cage. But I'm going to do a box. So I'm going to add two onto these and flip them open as well. So the last two I've just attached. I'm going to come in with another jump ring and I'm going to attach through those two. Picking up another one. And sliding through the same two. So I've now got my little cage, which is flipped up. And these are the two onto two there. So I'm going to make my next cage using those four. So I'm going to pinch it in between my fingers. I'm going to flip up and down, so I'm exposing those next two. I'm then going to open those next two out. So up and down, out and out, and I'm just going to catch the middle. Take my jump ring, which is open. Oh, there you go. There was always going to be one that pinged away. As I say, if you work down close to the table, you'll get a bit more sturdiness. But I am trying to do it under the camera so you can see. So I'm just going to catch these two now. So you can pinch it with your fingers if you need to and hold it in place. I find keeping the pin in is helpful because I can guide my jump ring through where it needs to go. And there's enough space in those six millimetre jump rings to allow me to do that. I think when you get the hang of it, then by all means, you can kind of downsize. So I've got my jump ring through that one. I'm going to pick up another one. So I'm just going to pick up my open jump ring and I'm going to go back through those little exposed bits. Just straightening that up because I've gone through the other jump ring as well there. Closing that over. And now when they flop down, you'll see here, I've got my box. So they're both sitting inside next to each other. And I can keep going with that. It would make an absolute beautiful weave. But again, I think that is enough for a little earring. So I'm going to take those last two. I've just attached, picking up my last open jump ring, sliding that on through the end and closing it up. I find the Byzantine easier than the box. I don't know why, but I think the box looks absolutely beautiful. So this is it from one angle. That's it from another and all I'm going to do is just add my little gemstone on. Lucy says it looks a very fiddly project to do. I hope you can do it. Um, I hope you can do it too. I'm sure you absolutely will be able to do it. It looks more complicated because when you're making, you're just making under your own eyes and you're making like flat on the desk. I'm trying to hold mine at an angle under a camera. So I can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to look through the camera to see what I'm doing. So I'm making it look much more difficult than it actually is. But no, Lucy, I've not tried it with the four millimeters yet because, um, oh no, not, not just yet. I've tried it with um, larger jump rings. I did it with eight millimeter jump rings and that looked lovely. I don't know where I put them as the sample to show you. Um, and today I was wondering if I used Aha! If I use the larger jump rings, whether you would be able to see a little bit better. So this is it with the larger. If I've got larger jump rings, I might show you with that just to just to show you how easy it is. But I actually think having, I mean, 
they're lovely but personally i think the smaller jump rings are just that little bit more delicate so again i'm going to make my um gemstone dangle on the end of that one so for the silver i'm going to use a fluorite because i've got it here on my desk so again coming in with my ball pin sliding it on give it a little bend give it a little trim Just going to turn a little loop, doesn't have to be too large, just enough to be able to flip it open. I haven't closed that over fully. So I can flip it open and attach it onto that last single jump ring. You can add two jump rings onto the bottom of it if you wanted to, but for this design, just do it this way and then close that back over. So I've got my gorgeous little box weave. Should I see if I've got some larger jump rings? I wonder if that would help. Hmm. I do apologise for leaning right in front of the camera um, and rummaging in a stash. Right, let's break out the big boys. Let's get the 10 by ones just so you can see. Hopefully, if it's a bit bigger, it might be easier to see. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to open these out. We've got 10 minutes. So I'm sure you might be able to see. So that's closed perfectly already. So I'm going to keep that as my closed one, my closed one, and I'm going to open out 10. Now these to me feel a little bit, not thinner in gauge, but the six mil just feels that little bit more sturdy for me. So I'm not opening them up too much, just a little bit. I'm gonna take my ear wire, just to give myself something to hold on to. I'm gonna pick up an open one. I'm gonna attach on my two closed, and I'm gonna take my ear wire too. And I'm going to close that up. And that's just going to give me something to hold on to. Holding on to that. So I've got two closed jump rings. Let's move these to the side so we've got a little bit more focus. Okay. I'm going to pick up an open jump ring. And I'm sliding that through. And I'm closing that over. I'm going to pick up another open jump ring and I'm sliding that through the same two rings and I am closing that one over. So I've got two on two. I'm then going to let these flop open. So side to side and then up and down. So what I'm doing is I'm exposing those two jump rings in the middle so I can pull it up and make that first cage. Definitely looks prettier with the smaller jump rings. Now you can let these flop to the side completely if you need to. As long as I've got those two jump rings, I can then oh, just pick it up my cutters. That would have been a disaster. I'm going to slide my jump ring through those two. Close it over, pick another one up, 
add that on. Lucy says it's good to practice with bigger jump rings. I think it is until you just get the hang of it. But honestly, I think personally, I find probably the six millimeter easier to use. But you can see there now I've created that cage. That's what your cage looks like. Now I've got those two. I'm going to add on one more through those two extra closed ones. I'm going to swap into my hand, or that dom less dominant hand to hold it. I use my dominant hand to pick another open one up and slide that on too. So I've got my cage, my two in the middle, and then I'm going to work with a working four, so to speak, for my Byzantine. Back open through those two closed jump rings, close that over with my dominant hand, picking up another open one off the mat, closing that over. So I've now got two, on two, on two. And it's these last two I'm going to make my cage with. I'm holding it in between my fingers, letting these flop out to the side. So I'm opening outwards and upwards, just so I can catch in the middle that exposed part of those jump rings. And that's going to help me create that second cage. So picking my last open jump ring up. Don't have to keep you pinning it when it's like this. But you do find it helps. And then closing that over. And then when I put a little bit of pressure, pulling on each end, I've got my two cages, which should face into each other. <laughs> Camille says, I feel like flipping them back and forth. I do quite like to just sometimes let go and then give it a little pull. So hopefully you will be able to give that a go and you'll be pleased with what you've made. You've got some absolute gorgeous little jump rings in your kit and some absolute beauties of gemstones for £3.50 or £4 a kit, and it's making four pairs of earrings. So you can use this design here, which is your Byzantine, or you can, where's the box gone? That's a Byzantine, where's my box? Here's the one I've just made. <laughs> Got loads of Byzantine, there you go. This one is your box. So those cages are sitting next to each other in a little row. The only difference with the Byzantine is you've got those two jump rings in between. I hope I made them look fairly straightforward and I do hope you like them. I really, really enjoy making them. I think they're gorgeous. I'm going to put some in my ears. Um, I'm going to just make sure, well, if I pick up odd ones, I pick up odd ones, don't I? So this is the Soda Light on the gold colourway. I'll put one of each in. So I've got a Byzantine in one, and I'm just putting the box one in there. Just think. They are so very lovely and really lightweight to wear. And you got your gemstones as well there. Lucy says they look very nice. Mina says they're beautiful. Kim K says looks lovely. I will have to give it a go. Thank you, Natalie. You are most welcome. Marcia says if you use bigger jump rings, you can capture round beads in the cages. Yes, you can. And I'm going to do something, I think, in, well, I've already kind of got something planned where you're going to capture um, the beads in between the cages. So you can make pendants with um, captured beads or you can make bracelets or whatever, but it's on my to-do list. So yes, definitely Marcia. Um, Lucy says, thank you so much for showing us how to do them. I'm going to give it a try. And Joyce says, very pretty. Thank you so much. So thank you all for being with me. I hope you have the most wonderful weekend. I will be back with you on Monday. I'm making necklaces. I know I look confused because I'm like, well, which, which necklaces am I making? They're gorgeous, whatever they are, because 
really do gorgeous stuff um thanks to totally beads beautiful products and then on wednesday i'm going to be with you instead of the friday and we're beginning to do some little easter inspired makes so easter's coming already where has i say where's march gone but where's the year gone have a lovely weekend everybody take care of yourself and stay making bye